Hey everybody, today I have a huge announcement to make. I'm gonna be talking about Broadview County and its brand new update that's coming out on January 14th and how it has a chance to become the next big city RP game. Reason this announcement is so huge for me especially is because I'm most likely gonna transition my content from being primarily in Firestone over to Broadview. Reason for that is because of how much I love the concept of this game and I have a strong belief that this will become the next big city RP game. Now in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys exactly why I'm calling this the future of this genre and exactly why you should give it a shot. The first thing I'm going to discuss in this video is what Broadview County is and where it's based. Broadview County is based on the real life Monroe County in the late 90s. If you're unfamiliar with what Monroe County is, well it's at the southern tip of Florida and reaches all the way down to the keys of Florida. Broadview County covers the Key West part of Monroe, so expect to see a lot of sunshine and Florida beaches when you first visit. Broadview focuses a lot on realism and matching what Monroe County looked like back in the late 90s. They use the real life Florida state statutes for in-game laws, including real life police codes and procedures. I even interviewed one of the founders about this so you guys can hear it firsthand. Well, we tried to stay as true to Monroe County as we could. Uh, we had a lot of reference photos, videos. In some cases, we looked at, you know, TV shows, movies that happen to take place in the area, as well as because the four of us, Social, uh, JHW0, Unmiss, and I are native to Florida, and we, I'm, I'm sure all of us have been to the Keys. I'm not sure I can't speak for everybody. We're aware of, you know, how Florida is, the culture surrounding Florida, all the terrain and deliveries are accurate to the time. Even as smaller details like the doors opening outwards because of hurricane codes after Hurricane Andrew in 1993. Those little designs and details that, you know, I randomly kind of came up with and gave everyone a headache over, we decided to translate it into the game to give it that sense of this this can be an actual place that people can go and, and see and point and say hey this looks like this other things like the radio codes and some parts of some liveries we had to take from other places more generic um points of reference because we couldn't find I, either we didn't find it in time or we couldn't we couldn't find it at all we couldn't find any references that directly relate to monroe county but aside from that and avoiding copyright with some of the models that jh had to you know redesign some of the models we tried to keep as much as Mon monroe county in broadview county and as the game continues to develop we're hoping to continue feel continue giving that feel that you're in a tropical setting that you're in paradise maybe add boats and other you know small hidden stuff just to sell the scenery as much as we can and hopefully throughout the development cycle and nearing the game's completion you know broadview county will feel like the florida keys as we would imagine it so hopefully that helped give you guys a clear image on their inspiration and background that helps make this game more realistic now for the next part, I'd like to discuss the game mechanics and some of the concepts that they have planned for the future. This part is what makes me most excited and after hearing a lot of the different possibilities you'll be able to do as a civilian once this game is actually released. And from the sounds of it, it'll be more fun to be a civilian than a cop or medic, which is usually your traditional path in a game like this. Also interviewed Unmiss, which is kind of the head honcho of the development for Broadview. so. I asked him a couple questions about this, so I hope you guys enjoy about three minutes of that interview. It didn't really come to fruition. Like we we started our project like this build of the game in like twenty like mid twenty twenty or so, and um, that was pretty much our inspiration. I mean, it shares um, a lot of similarities to Mayflower um, in terms of gameplay, but uh, we have lots of plans for civilians, which I feel like that game kind of filled to capitalize on. And, um, a little bit, even though it was pretty fun. Um, you know, some of the stuff that I've shared for civilians, like once I shared them, like to some of our boosters recently, like they were even like, Dane, like playing this as a civilian sounds fun. Like I don't even know if I'm going to stay a cop. So that's, that's the, that's like the inspiration. 
Um, I'd like to start working on ways for people to legally make money as soon as possible. I mean, like, the obvious answer would be civilian jobs, which we do plan to do, like, you know, package courier, like, tow trucks, public works, and stuff like that. But I do have extensive plans for players to be able to, like, lease their own stores, um, kind of with the property system that we have, you might have seen in the trailer. So, like, you'll be able to, like, buy your own store, customize it. You, know, you can craft items, um, like, guns, hardware, and food, and, like, you can, like, place it down and sell it so I think a, a pretty good goal um, that I'd have for Broadview um, soon is um, which might people it might be a little bit like controversial but I think a good goal would be to completely remove like all the shops in the game and basically just have everything like player crafted player sold stuff like that so they plan on adding a ton of civilian jobs for people to pursue like tow public works, transport job, etc, etc. That's not really anything new, though. We've seen plenty of groups add jobs like that, and those jobs by themselves don't really incentivize you to actually play as a civilian. Now, if you were listening to the last part, Unmissed talks about player-run stores, and in some sense, a player-run economy, with people exchanging goods in person rather than going to an NPC about it. If you're familiar with Gmod RP servers, it's sort of in a way an inspiration from that, and that'll hopefully open up an endless array of business opportunities for both legal and even illegal operations. Before developers had to add custom businesses like Firestone, with this mechanic you don't need one bit of development support for your business. All you need is the materials to make your product that you're selling and the store to sell it in. That's one reason why I think being a civilian will be a lot more fun than your traditional medic and cop jobs. And it'll also really open up a lot of paths for people to go down so that'll definitely increase the overall replayability of the game. Now that we've gotten the background of Broadview and what the game plans on becoming, I'd like to talk about what's been added in this recent update. To be honest, I'm not even sure the word update is the right word. The game has received a huge overhaul in so many different areas that you could honestly consider it a new version entirely. Firstly, I'm going to cover the part that really took the longest and that was the overhaul of the backend code. Because it took quite a while just to complete that. Now that the new code structure has been added, updates have been coming out left and right, and if you've been boosting the server, you've been getting development leaks on the daily. So even with Broadview only having one scripter, they can easily push out updates at a much faster rate than some of these bigger teams in other communities. Also, it definitely helps that there's only one scripter who has like nearly seven years of experience, because if you know anything about other groups having multiple scripters, it usually ends in chaos. Also, some other big game changers that were added in was R15, definitely controversial, and I gotta actually say I like it, but it's definitely not perfect because, well, the running animation is kind of an eyesore. The economy had a rework as well, with prices changing drastically so that people can have certain things to save up for, including the cost of rent that usually varies based on the quality of the residency that you're trying to rent. Another big thing that was added was the length-based interactions, which pretty much means Instead of just clicking a keybind and doing whatever interaction you want, you just need to hold a keybind for a certain amount of time, depending on well the interaction, obviously. Also, the game has added a bleeding system, where if you get stabbed or shot, you'll slowly bleed out until you or someone else uses a bandage to help stop the bleeding. On the topic of health, the ER in Leesburg, which is the main city in Broadview, finally has an interior now, and when you need to regain your health, you go to the front desk there, and you can pay to heal. Also, some big news for BCFR, on top of the prior news, they're getting a new livery for their entire fleet, including a new ambulance model. On top of the fleet change, the fire station has been moved outside of Leesburg, more near Delfino to prevent people from crowding around like they did previously. So as I said above, the game received quite the overhaul, and included in that is the vehicle models and handling. New vehicles like the Gazelle, Python, and Caravan were added, but other vehicles that were previously in the game got updated models that help fit into a new low poly style that they're trying to go for. Driving off-road now actually shakes your camera to hopefully help prevent people from trying to off-road their way out of problems, and they also added tire effects for when you're driving on dirt and rain. Also a big problem Broadview had before in Alpha was how empty the map was. Well, in this update, the urban sector of 
Leesburg is pretty much complete with I think only one building that needs to still be completed. Also, for stores and restaurants, there's a cool feature where if you stay overnight or past hours, you'll receive a warning to leave. And if you don't leave, then it'll notify the police in game via the radio. Now, something that most people are probably most interested in is the property system. Currently, there's nothing like it in this genre and it's really cool, like a Sims brought to a city RP type of game. And also, there's a pretty large variety of apartment buildings to choose from, so you're not ever stuck with just one style. Just a tip, choose your apartment carefully since you don't want to end up with a crappy apartment layout, because if you're not an interior god, it makes designing quite the headache. Now the police got a few new features as well, such as lockpicking to help unlock vehicles, trunks, and apartment doors. Also on the topic of apartment doors, we also have the option to kick them down, which is going to be really cool when you're in a gunfight and you have to breach. And you also have the more peaceful option of knocking, which was just added as well. We also got a new tool, which is called the nightstick. Every time you hit someone with it, it has a one out of third chance to ragdoll them, which is pretty much just going to cause them to fall down to the floor, allowing you to cuff them. Also with the properties being added, we've gotten an update for record searching, so we can now look up who owns what property vehicle and some new additions to the player's record. BCSO can finally pull people out of vehicles after breaking the window of whatever seat you're trying to pull the driver from and also when you shoot vehicles they take damage. There's plenty more updates that I could talk about and I could honestly make this video 30 minutes. So instead I'm just gonna let you guys explore and find out everything on your own when the game is finally open to the public. Also as a reward for watching till the end, Unmiss has allowed me to share some information with you guys about the next update that will come after this one. He talked about the next update having more opportunities for our RP, like the ability to run people over, new furniture, way to call the police, phone from your apartment, and ATM robberies. Big thanks to everyone who watched the video. Be sure to check out Broadview, and also, if you liked the video, it would really help me out if you subscribed and give it a like. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.